Welcome to a coding challenge. Now, in this coding challenge, some indeterminate amount of time, I'm going to attempt to build a simple cloth simulation. I'm going to use a variety of tools for this. I'm going to use something called processing, and I have a little bit of code that I'm actually starting with that I will talk to you about. It barely has anything in it. I'm also going to use a library called Toxic Lens. So look in the description of this video, find the link to this page, download Toxic Libs Complete 0020, and you'll have the same exact version of the library that I'm using. Now, this library cannot be installed currently through the Processing Contributions Manager, so you've got to go to your Finder, you've got to go to your Processing Sketchbook, and go into your library's folder and take that, that thing that you downloaded and put it in there. So I already have manually installed that if you have trouble, ask in the comments. Maybe I'll make a side video that just shows you how to install Toxic Libs. But once you have Toxic Libs installed, you can go up into Processing under Sketch, and you can go to Import Library, and you can go to uh, now scroll down here, Toxic Libs Complete, and I what I want is Verlet Physics. I'm going to use the Verlet Physics Library. Now, what is Verlet Physics? Why am I using the Toxic Libs Library? Well. I might refer you to my Nature of Code playlist that has a whole set of videos that covers the basics of what is Verlet physics and the basics of how Toxic Libs works. But the short one sentence summary here is, Verlet physics is going to give me a physics engine that has particles and springs. And I'm going to make my cloth essentially as a grid of particles. <laughs> now this is a terrible grid, but you can see it. that's a weird sort of spiral. And then have all of these connected with springs. So these particles all connected with springs, gravity goes into the world and suddenly everything's hanging down cloth-like. So let's see if we can make that happen. So now, I have started this up already just with two array lists. I have an array list of particle objects and an array list of spring objects. Now you might be asking yourself, huh? <laughs> Toxic Libs has Verlet particle objects in it and Toxic Libs has Verlet spring objects in it. So why do you have your own particle and your own spring objects? Well, the way that I'm going to do this, which is just a particular style, is that what I'm going to do in my particle class is I'm going to say extends verlet particle 2D. So I'm going to take, I'm going to do this in two dimensions first. So I'm going to take the two-dimensional verlet particle and extend it, and then I'm going to say super XY. So I'm using object-oriented programming inheritance. I refer you to my video on inheritance if you aren't familiar with this particular concept. Um, and I probably have called this wrong, but I'll, uh, let me look in here. I'm going to look, I'll go to the Java docs here and look for verlet particle 2D. Did I? So what's wrong here in my errors? The hierarchy of type particle is inconsistent. Uh, oh, I'm missing. I'm sorry, I'm missing. So little did I know <laughs> that I am also missing some classes I need from um, Toxic Libs uh, core. So I need to also Im import Toxic Libs core, which I actually don't need all of this stuff. Um, so I could probably get rid of most of it, but I'm just going to leave it all in there. So there's a lot of extra import statements, and that should fix that error, yes. Because verlet particle actually extends something called vec2d, which is a vector, which I would refer you to my tutorial series on vectors, but I've got to get moving with this coding challenge. So I've got now a particle, and the reason I want to do this is because I want to write a function that is capable of just displaying an ellipse um, wherever this uh, particle is. So I'm going to say fill 255. I'm just going to have a white, uh, white ellipse wherever that particle is. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to write, um, let's, have, let's think about our uh, mesh as the particles being like 10 pixels apart. So I'm going to create a variable called w for each particle being 10 pixels apart. And I'm going to say something like for uh, Int i equals zero. I let me just start. I'm going to just pick. I could do be thoughtful about the math here, but I'm just going to say let me have uh, 40 particles, and I'm going to say uh, particle p is a new particle, and I need an x and a y. So I'm going to start x at like pixel 100, and I'm going to start y maybe at uh, like pixel 10, and then I make those new particles, and then uh, what do I want to do? I want to add those particles to my array list, 
And now I want to say for every particle in my array list, I want to display those particles. So let's run this. And you can see, ah, whoops, ah, I knocked over a light. <laughs> you can see, ah, I forgot to move them around. So I want each particle to move over by uh, 10 pixels. And you can see, there we go. These are all my particles. So my particles right now, though, however, are not experiencing any physics. I want them to experience physics. So in order for them to experience physics, I need to create a uh, physics object. I'm looking over here. I need to create a verlet physics object. I'm going to make a 2D one. I'm going to say uh, verlet physics 2D physics. And then in setup, I'm going to create that physics world is a new verlet. And I'll extend this into 3D later. I'm going to make a new physics world. And then what am I going to do? I need to say physics dot add particle p. So what I've got here is I want all the particles to also experience physics, but they don't seem to be doing anything yet. Okay, well let's put in some gravity. So one of the things that's also available in the Toxic Clubs library is a gravity behavior. And a gravity behavior is just like a vector. And uh, I can, now I can say, let me add a Gravity, let me create a vector called gravity, which is a new vector that points where? Down. So 0 comma 10. It's going to point down. And I'm going to say gravity behavior GB is a new gravity behavior with what? That gravity vector. And then I'm going to say physics, and I guess that is a what did I spell wrong? Gravity behavior. Uh, did I spell that correctly? Oh, yes. Ah, why is it not know what it is? It's ambiguous uh, because there are more than one. There's toxic physics behaviors and there's toxic physics 2D behaviors. So I'm going to go here and right now we're going to live in 2D. So I'm just going to do everything in 2D. So that fixed that. And now I'm going to say physics.add behavior. GB. Okay, how are we doing here? Now we have gravity. Let's run this. Still nothing. Why? Well, I think I probably forgot a really crucial step. I made particles, I added them to the physics. I made gravity, I added to the physics. But I forgot to say physics, move forward with time. So I need to say, I think, in draw, uh, physics.step. I'm guessing it's physics.step. And let me run this. Oops, I'm in the wrong place. OK, so that does not exist. So let's go to, uh, in my documentation here, Vertilet, no, no, Vertilet Physics 2D. And let's look at the functions. Uh, get, get time step, set, no, set time step, update. OK, so I need to update, not step. Update. It should hopefully have some default time step. Yeah, there we go. Did you see how those particles fall super fast? Well, maybe I can make the, the gravity a little less strong. And you can see they're all falling. Now, they all just fell because there's nothing holding them anywhere. So what I want to now do is put springs between them. So what I need to do, I made 40 particles. And what I want to do now is go through and say, I'm going to go through that array. And what I'm going to do is, and I'm going to not go all the way to the end of it. What I want to do is I need to create, OK, so I need particle A is element i. So I want to get the first thing from the array, which is i. And it's, uh, with an array list, it's dot size. So I want to get particle i. And then I also want to get particle B to be the next one, i plus 1. And what do I want to create? I want to create a verlet spring 2D. So a spring is a connection between those two particles. Is a new verlet spring between A and B. And then I think the last argument, or there's two arguments, maybe there's like the strength or a minimum distance. I don't really remember. <laughs> Let's go look here. I'm going to click on verlet spring 2D and look at the constructor. And it says A, B, length, 
and strength. Ah, so a default length, what's the resting length of a spring, right? If you pull a spring and it kind of bounces back, where does it rest? And then the strength, like how, lo how strong is it? So, so I don't see really a particular variable uh, range for strength, so we're going to have to guess. So I'm going to say um, uh, the default length is W, and the default, let me just add a strength of 0.5. Okay, and then what I need to do is add that spring to the springs array list and then say physics.add spring s. Oh, and I actually want this to be a spring. So I actually forgot that I have my own spring object. My own spring object just connects two springs, and in there, this should extend verlet spring 2D. And then uh, what I want to do is uh, call uh, super a, b, and then w, 0.5. So I want to make uh, it a spring between these two particles with a distance of resting length of w and a strength of 0.5. And then I also want to write my display function. And my display function is stroke 255 line between a and b. So what have I done? I now made my own spring, which extends the toxiclets verlet springs. It's a spring that connects two particles, and to display it, it's just a line. So now we should be able to go back here, and I should be able to say, let's also display all of the springs. OK, so you see that's falling down. Now here's the thing. What's exciting about this, now that they're connected with springs, is if one is not moving, the others should kind of stay connected to it somehow. So one thing that I can do is I can lock particles. So I'm going to say uh, just a random particle. It's not a random one. It's the first one. I'm going to say p.lock. I think this will take this particle and lock it in place, meaning it never moves even if the physics moves. There you go. So you can see I have this nice springy string right now. So just from locking that first particle, let's lock also uh, let's lock uh, another one. Whoops, P1, this should be P1, this should be P2. I'm going to lock both of these particles. Here we go. And we have this nice little springy thing. Now, I actually don't really want to display the particles. I really just want to see the springs, because that's what I have right now. And I could maybe, just so you could see it a little bit better, I could make stroke weight 2. We can look and we see we have this nice bungee cord-like thing. Bounces and rests. Now, here's the thing. This is just a string, and I want to program a cloth and I want that cloth to be in 3D. So we've kind of I've kind of done the core mechanic here. In a way, I'm done. But what I need to figure out now is, OK, what I did was I said particle, 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 connect with the spring, 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 connect with the spring. What I need to do now is say particle, 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 and then have another one, another row of particles, and all these are connected, and all these are connected, and then this is, they're also connected to the particle above it. So this is going to be a little bit trickier, but I think totally doable. Let's see if we can work this out in our head, and by our head, I mean my head right now. So one thing that I might like to do is, OK, so here's where I'm creating the particles. So you know, one possibility would be to, I think an easy way to do this would actually be to use a 2D array. So this, was now, this would now be particles that are 40 by 40. And I always want them to start with x at 100 and y at, uh, sorry, x. So let me think about this. So for the very first particle, we want them to start at x and y equals 100. The, for, uh, the outer loop, I will have be the, the columns, I guess. So first, the inner loop, we go down. So we always start with y is 10 here, and then y gets set back to 0. 
So y gets set back to, uh, y goes up, sorry, y goes up, y equals y plus w. So for every i, so this is, what, what are we doing here? y, we start at x is 100, y equals 10. And then we go down all the y's. Then we increase over by x and reset y. So I'm doing this as columns first. I could, I could put j on the outside. But this should give me a particle now. And I'm going to uh, get rid of the springs. We should at least, and I'm going to get rid of the gravity. We should at least see a grid of particles now. OK, I don't see any particles because I turned off particles.display. Why did I delete that? I should have just commented it out. OK, that's perfect. I see my grid of particles. And maybe 40 by 40. Somehow I magically like centered it with math. I don't know, by accident. Uh, 600 by 600. Yeah, you can see. OK, so that you see. There you see. That's my grid of particles. So now I need to figure out how to connect all of the springs properly. So I think for me right now, there's a lot of different ways I could do this. But I'm actually just going to change this to a two-dimensional uh, particle array, which is 40 by 40. And honestly, I should 100% be using variables for those numbers. But just for simplicity right now, 40 by 40. And what I'm going to do here is no, I just need to say now particles uh, i index j equals uh, p. And I can simplify this. I don't need two lines of code here. Uh, actually, no, I do, because I want to also add it to the physics. So I just changed to a 2D array. And then in this no longer works, because I now need to, and let me make these variables. I'm going to make int columns equals 40, int rows equals 40. So I'm going to use those. And columns, because these are going to appear in a lot of places. Columns, rows. And because what I want now is to just to check sh to make sure it's working, uh, I need this I need this loop again in a lot of places to display all of them. I want to have this loop in draw to loop through the two-dimensional array, uh, and this should be a dot, obviously. So I still should have oh oh so this is not going to work anymore with the locking. I'll fix that. It's going to make things easier. So now, OK, now I have my two-dimensional array of particles. Brilliant. OK, so what do I do now? Now, what I need to do is take this loop and connect everything. Whoops. So what I'm going to do is similar to what I did down here. For every single particle, I need to connect to the right and down. So what I could do is actually. I only want to go from 0 to columns minus 1. And then rows, I want to skip every row, right? Because if I'm over here and I connect this particle to this one, oh, no, 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 I don't want to skip any row. I just don't need to connect back up. So as long as I connect each particle to the right and the below, everything will be connected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. this is going to work. And then we stop at rows minus 1. So this is actually not so bad. So I first need uh, particle A1 is particles i, j. And particle A2 is particles i plus 1, j. No, B, B1, <laughs> A1 and B1. And then I want A2 and B2. So that's connecting to the right. And then connecting down is j plus 1. So these are particles. A and B connect to the right, A1 and B1, A1 and, B, uh, and, and I actually don't need A2. I just need A and B1 and B2. So that one particle gets connected to the right and below. So how did I make a spring? This is how I made a spring. So I'm going to say spring S1, spring, springs add, add to the array list and add to the physics. And then uh, I, this should all comment out. This goes from A to B1, A to B2. This is spring 2. There's probably some like 
slightly more efficient thing I can do here. But this is now me going through every particle and connecting to the right and connecting it down. So, uh, and I can delete what I had here. And eventually I'm going to want to lock particles again, but let's, let's run this one more time. So we can see, okay, all the particles there, they're all connected. Let me not display the particles anymore. So you can see there's the grid. There's the grid of everything being connected with springs. So what if I add gravity back in? Everything falls. But now what if I lock? And what I want to lock is what? I want to lock particles 0, 0 lock. And then I also want to lock another particle on the top, which is zero, uh, which is the end, which is columns minus one, index zero. So this, there we go. Whoa, look at that. Look at my crazy swinging, hanging cloth. There we go. You know, I could lock one in the middle too if I wanted. So this is now interesting where we could start to play with this value, like the strength of the springs, you can see, whoa, the string is like, the spring, excuse me, are really strong, probably way too strong. Maybe the max is supposed to be one. Um, you can see here, you know, very different if I make this 0 0.01. Like, whoa, look how insane that is. Is it ever going to bounce back up? It's so weak. Look at the craziness that it's doing. But now we do, we at least, um, and let me, let me make this like, I'm going to make this like 0.8, I think is a kind of reasonable number. So you can see there's my cloth hanging, and it looks very three-dimensional, but everything that I've done here is two-dimensional. So let's just see briefly if we can make this three-dimensional. Okay, let's see if we can make this three-dimensional push forward in this particular coding challenge. I have no idea how long I've been doing this for, but you will know this by how, how long the video is eventually when it's published. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to save this. That was actually the 2D one. So I'm going to just save this as 3D cloth underscore. So I'm saving both of those. I also want to, um, I want to kind of clean up. Uh, now, I'll clean this up later. So I'm going to clean up the imports and all of that later. Uh, and what I'm going to do is uh, sketch. When I publish the code on GitHub, I'll clean up all the imports that are unnecessary. I'm going to go back to Verlet Physics. And uh, great. And I don't want the 2D physics anymore. So let's see now if we could convert this to 3D. So this should now be just a Verlet particle. And I should now say X, Y, Z. Uh, let's not worry about the display for a second. And the spring should just be a Verlet spring. This should not change at all. It's just not a 3D spring anymore. And uh, here, I should say Verlet physics to have 3D physics. Uh, gravity behavior. Uh, and now this needs to be a 3D vector for 3D. And I'm still going to point along the y-axis for now. And everything else should just be the same, especially if I make that 0. And I'm going to say P3D. And I'm going to run this. So this should be identical. So this is now running in P3D. And it's actually technically happening. The math is happening in 3D. But I'm just seeing the same exact 2D visualization. And we'll make it more 3D in a second. Um, so what I want to do here is first in spring, I want to add this. And you know, technically, I should fix this. Like I should have this draw uh, in 3D somehow. And I should say translate x, y, z. Um, but to be honest with you, uh, I'm not going to display the particle, so I can ignore that. So I'm going to run this and make sure this is still working. There we go. Now, let's think about this. What I want now is to maybe pin the cloth on four corners on the top and see it fall down from the, from the middle. Um, so there's a couple ways I could do this. Number one is, let's think about our view here. We've created all of these. I think what I want to do is, at the beginning of draw, I want to translate to the center. So I want 0, 0 to be the center of my window right now. And what I actually want to do is, let's not use x and y anymore. I want to start, let's use x, which is horizontal, and z, which is forward. So I want to turn y into z. So x should actually start at negative 50. 
And this should now become z. And I'm going to have z start like kind of far away from us. Uh, I'll start it at negative 100. And then I want to create these particles at x. And I'm going to have y just be 0. So I'm going to create the particles at x, 0, z. Now let's see what happens. Ooh. OK, well, first of all, I want to um, let's take out the gravity behavior and just see if things look right. So it looks kind of reasonable, but it's sort of hard to say. Let's start z at negative 50. Uh, and um, let me add some rotation here and draw. So let me rotate uh, along. Let me spin around the x-axis by some angle. And I could add PZ cam just to like spin around things. That might actually even be better. Oh, so it looks like all the particles are in a line. So what did I mess up here? Uh, oh, this is, this is, look at this. This is, needs to be X. Change both of those things to Z. Somebody already mentioned that in the chat. Okay, good. So now we can see my mesh. I don't have it in exactly centered in the right place. I'm going to, just speculate, I have 40 particles separated by 10. Right, do I have 40 particles and they're separated by 10? I should go back, I, I was gonna say negative 200. Uh, yeah, so I think negative 200 and let's just start it much further away. There we go. So you can see there is my mesh. Now it's uh, spinning around and let me take out this rotation. And actually, let me, uh, where, let, me, let me take out this rotation. And let me actually move y up. So we're, I just want to move y up by like negative 100. So now, there it is. There's my mesh sitting there. That's my cloth. It's now in 3D. Springs are all attached. I should be able to put gravity back in. I forgot what parts of it I pinned. So we'll find out. And you can see, oh, there it is in 3D. It's kind of like a flag waving thing. Now, I was going to pin all the corners. So let's pin one more corner just for fun. Uh, so I'm going to pin uh, columns minus one, rows minus one. I think that'll, that now I'm going to pin three corners. Ooh. What did I? That didn't work. Uh, isn't that another corner? Uh, let's try. Uh, Oops. I don't know why that didn't work. There we go. Now I pinned. So let's think about this. Oh, no, that should still work. That last corner. Columns minus one. Hmm. Am I off by one somehow because of the way I did? There we go. So I don't know what I did. So you can see there's my cloth now. It's like a hammock. This is a. This is a coding challenge hammock generator. But you get the idea. Now, I'm not, I haven't done anything with drawing here. I could really turn this into a mesh with begin shape, end shape, and triangle mesh. I could put lighting in it. Toxic Libs actually has these constraints. So I could put like a sphere constraint and have the cloth just fall on it and fold over the sphere and fall onto a ground. Toxic Libs has a lot of features also for turning these into graphics meshes and texturing them. But you get the right ideas. People in the chat are telling me, oh, it has no springs. I don't know. Oh, it has no springs. So I lock that. So that's what the issue is. That bottom right hand particle, I don't actually attach it with any springs because I'm not doing diagonal springs. The, I've been doing this for a half an hour now that these cameras go across. So that's the reason why that bottom one isn't working. Um, just to come back over here for a second, right? Let's say this is the bottom particle. These particles are connected, and these particles are connected, but this is not connected to anything. Now, if I were connecting them also to the right, which would be interesting, let's add, let's do that. I know this video was over, but if you're already watching this for a half an hour, you might as well watch it a few more minutes. But let's go and add uh, particle B3, which would be I plus one, J plus one, and then spring S3. So now I'm adding a third spring. And then I can go ahead, and now first let me uh, and lock that last particle. But let's, let's take these out and run this and just see how it behaves. So that's kind of interesting. Oh, it has this like, 
it's sort of like off to the side because like the last particles aren't connected down. I should really do, I really need to do the last row. So there's lots of little flaws here. That's sort of interesting to see how, how much that changes it. So I need to take that last row and connect down, but not to the right. You can see, look what I've done now connecting them. I have this like mutant hammock, but you get the idea. I'll clean up this code and make it sort of nicer and have all the springs connected properly before I post it. But you get the idea here. I hope you've learned something from watching this video. I skipped over a ton of things that are part of toxic libs and virulent physics, but you know, I'll try to link back to my other videos that cover vectors and toxic libs. But hopefully you'll be able to do something with this and create some sort of interesting simulation or project and share it with me. Thanks for watching this coding challenge.